If you're prepping for a job interview or just want to sharpen your DAX skills, this video is for you. I'm Justin from Pragmatic Works, and we scoured several job postings and their associated interview questions related to DAX skills. So in this video, we're diving into the top five DAX formulas that interviewers seem to love and hiring managers will notice. And if you like this, check out our DAX guides on our on-demand learning platform and all of our DAX videos on our Pragmatic Works YouTube channel, especially our DAX tutorial series. And if you want to practice, download the starting report file found in the description below and feel free to pause me, speed me up as needed. Let's get started. I've already made a measure table. You can see it out here and the measures that we're going to be making. I've started with a total sales measure. We're gonna need that for almost all of our formulas. I also created a couple of relationships in the model. So let me expand our date and our sales table. I'll bring this over to model view. You can see what is necessary to do the things that we're going to do today is a relationship between the date column of our date table and the order date of our sales table. That is the active relationship. And we also have an inactive relationship between the date column and the ship date column. And we'll be using that inactive relationship for one of our five. So let's get to it. Coming in at number five is the switch function. The switch function is a cleaner alternative to nested if statements and is perfect for creating readable logic. Let's say you want to categorize sales performance. A sale over $75,000 is a high sale. A sale over 50,000 is medium and anything else is low. So here's how you would do that. It would be a calculated column on the sales table. So let's head over to our sales table and take a look at the column I've made. There it is, and the DAX that I've written. So let me make that bigger for everybody, and you do that with control plus sign. Let's explain what's happening here, and then we'll make a visual. Switch combined with true is a clever way to evaluate multiple conditions sequentially. Using true with switch mimics the complexity of those nested if statements, but it's much easier to read and modify. You can use multiple discrete values rather than binary decisions like true false. So it checks each condition in order. In this case, if the total sales measure that I've written according to the total sales is greater than 75,000, we'll put that in the high category. Over 50,000 in the medium category. So if it meets the first criteria, it's in a category. Then if it meets the second criteria, it's in its own category. So we're not gonna have everything over 75,000 included in medium as well. It's gonna be 50,000 to 74,999. And then everything else is going to be in the low category. This logic is row-based meaning it evaluates each row of the sales table individually. Since it categorizes each row based on its own value, it should be a calculated column. So the result is stored per row and can be used in visuals like slicers or tables. Let's head over to report view, make a slicer, and we'll insert our performance category. So there we can see a high, low, and medium in a slicer. And then of course, whatever data we add into this report can be sliced by those categories. If you want this visual to show low, medium, then high, you would create a sort column in the data model, and then you would sort this column by that column. We could rearrange them high, medium, low if we want to. But let's move on to our number four. Coming in at number four is the rank X function. This is your go-to for creating leaderboards and rankings. Imagine you need to rank salespeople by their total sales. So here's the measure. We'll go to sales rank and take a look at what we've got going on here. Rank X ranks the items, in this case, salespeople, based on an expression, typically a measure like total sales. The all function here removes filters so that all salespeople are considered in the ranking. The two commas there are there because the third argument is optional and it's being skipped. Although I am using ASC to sort in ascending order and I'll show you why right now is when we get to our visual. This is great for leaderboard visuals, top end analysis, performance comparisons. Let's throw a bar chart in there and add some data labels and see what we can come up with. Let's create our bar chart or you could use a column chart as well. I'll switch to that. And then let's put in our salespeople and our sales rank. If we hover over Julia, we can see that her rank is 10. Now, 
What I did was I sorted in ascending order because Julia does have the most sales. And if I didn't do that, she would have the shortest bar in this particular visual. So you can manipulate this how you want, but I didn't want a visual where Julia, who has the most sales, had the shortest bar in the visual. So that's why I used the ascending function at the end of my expression. That's it for the rank X function. Let's move on to the next one. Coming in at number three, we've got calculate paired with same period last year, a classic time intelligence combo. We wanna compare this year's sales to last year's within a given context. Let's try this measure here. This measure I called sales last year. You can call it last year sales, anything that means that. And then you can use, start off with the calculate function. Calculate modifies the filter context to compute values under different conditions. Same period last year, shifts the date filter back one year. This combination is essential for year over year comparisons. Since it depends on the current filter context, for example, the selected month or year, it should be a measure, right? I'll make a table visual to keep it simple. We'll include the year, we'll include total sales, and we'll include sales last year, and we'll see where things line up. So I have my table here. Let's just make it a little bit bigger for everybody to read. So what we have going on here is we have the year column starting us off, and we have total sales and sales last year right next to it. Total sales in 2024, 587,656. Right next to that, I can see last year's sales, and if you want to validate that, all you have to do is look up one row in that column. So kept it simple here. 2023 has no prior year sales data. Therefore, we're showing a blank. And of course, that's affecting our total. Pretty valuable formula here. And you can use it in multiple different ways. But you can envision total sales along with sales from last year in the same visual. Or you can have this interacting with slicers. Slicers and cards would be a great idea here as well. Let's move on to the next one. Coming in at number two is the use relationship function. This activates an inactive relationship in your data model. Let's say your model has both order date and ship date, but only one can be active. Let's take a look at that inactive relationship in our model right now. The dotted line here represents an inactive relationship. You can see that date and ship date is that relationship. The solid line is the active relationship or the default relationship. So if we want to calculate sales by ship date, we would use this measure here. Since use relationship activates an inactive relationship temporarily within a calculation and is useful when your model has multiple date fields, like ours does with order date and ship date, only one of those can be active. This formula tells Power BI to calculate the total sales, but use the ship date instead of the default order date for time-based calculations. Since it's context sensitive and used for dynamic reporting, it should be a measure. Let's just take a look before we make a visual at George's sale on January 31st of 2023. You can see this sale, George, January 31st, 2023, that sale did not ship until the next month. So if we're doing some sort of time calculation, if we use the ship date, we'll get a different number than the order date. So let's head over to our report view. We're going to make a table. I'm gonna use month to show you where that difference comes in. Order date in January, ship date in February. So let's make a table, let's add month. Let's add our two different measures, total sales and sales by ship date. I'll make this bigger for us as well. And we can see here that we don't have any sales that are not in January or February in our sample data set. So we are filtered down to months one and two, January and February. But we can see here that the sale that George made, when we calculate by order date, that produces a larger number than when we calculate by ship date because it didn't ship until February. If we go by order date, we have more sales in January. Otherwise, one of those sales is going into February because it's being calculated by the ship date. All right. Our totals are still going to be the same because the sales were made and the sales are being accounted for. But you do see differences in total sales by order date and total sales by ship date. And finally, coming in at number one is the dynamic duo of filter and all. These functions are essential when you want to override filter context and perform custom aggregations, a common interview challenge. So let's say you want to calculate 
each person's percentage of the total sales, but only within a specific region or time frame. You'll need to use filter to define the scope and all to remove filters that would otherwise limit your calculation. Let's take a look at the measure that we've come up with percent of total sales. Call it whatever you want. You can spell out the word percentage in the name of the measure or even a column. You can use special characters. So percent of total sales is what I called this. And I started out with the divide function. The divide function calls for a numerator and a denominator. And it's a safe way of dividing the current context sales in this case by the total sales handling divide by zero errors. Total sales here is the numerator the sales amount for the current context. For example, a specific region, product, or time period. That's the numerator. Then I used calculate. Calculate modifies the context to compute the denominator, which is the total sales across all regions, ignoring any filters that might be applied in the report. Filter and all are used in conjunction here for a very specific reason. All removes all filters from the sales table. The filter then reapplies a custom condition, only including rows where region is not blank. So it must filter must be used inside a function that expects a table, like calculate. Otherwise, it won't return a scalar value. And then at the end of my formula here, we have sales not blank, ensuring that only rows with a non-blank region are included in the total. So let's make a couple of visuals for our number one place DAX formula. Here we are back in the report. Let's go ahead and make a column chart and we'll put our regions in there and we'll put our total sales, or excuse me, we'll put our new percent of total sales into this visual. So right now we have to hover over each individual region, north, south, east, and west, in order to see the percent of total sales. That's a tool tip. I can easily turn on my data labels and even move those data labels into, let's say, the center of the bar. Okay, so now let's make that a little bit bigger so we can all see it. When you add up 30%, the south 30%, and then about 21% and about 19%, that equals all the sales, 100% of sales. So now let's start to interact with this a little bit more. So let's add a slicer. Let's add a slicer with year on it. And we'll put that up here. We'll tuck it away and we'll change that to a vertical list. Okay, so we have this nice little slicer here and we could take a look at, let's say 2024, take a look at the middle year. Now these numbers aren't going to equal 100% because in 2024, the East was accounting for 6.41% of all all total sales over the three years. So that's how that slicer is working right now. But let's add another layer here. We'll add in a tree map. I'll put it down here in the bottom right for all of us to see. And let's add our region. And then we can make this into a hierarchy on the fly by adding our salesperson right underneath it. And we'll go percent of total sales in our value. Now, if I want to look at the north, I can use my tree map here and my visuals will interact. The north was 30.23% of total sales. But if I drop down a level here, I can now see all of my salespeople and I can click on, let's say, Diana, whose percent of total sales is 9.64. And I can now see where that's coming from. Diana must be assigned to the West region because that's where all her sales come from. Now, the West is accounting for 18.84% of total sales. Diana's portion of that is 9.64. Diana's portion of total sales is 9.64. So she's about half of the West sales. Now, let's add one more little layer here. Let's click on our column chart and add salesperson into the legend. And all of a sudden we have this color coded situation where if we click on Julia, who is 11.92%, she is represented right over here, leading the way in the South region. So click on Julia and we can filter down and see that uh, where those sales are coming from. She must be assigned to the South region and she's accounting for over a third, just visually looks like over a third of that total. So this is a great formula. I pulled it back up here so you can see it. This uses filter and all. It's really a dynamic duo. All right. If you master these five DAX formulas, you'll be ready to impress in your next Power BI interview because you've shown an understanding of several parts of Power BI. Like 
like clean formulas using the switch function, the X iterator functions using rank X, time intelligence using same period last year, data modeling using the use relationship function, and how to combine DAX functions like filter and all. If you want to practice with real data, check out our on-demand and our live taught courses at pragmaticworks.com. Otherwise, check out our DAX guides, also on the on-demand learning platform, and all of our DAX videos on our YouTube channel, especially our DAX tutorial series. And if you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and drop a comment with your favorite DAX trick. Until next time, keep building, keep learning, and keep getting hired. Thank <laughs> you.